I hope you have your sensual oils ready and your big shrine dedicated to worshipping the big booty insect goddess known as Sleeps because the Sleep Token record just dropped. Take me back to Eden. Which, I, I don't why would you want to go back to then, bro? There's like snakes. You don't, you don't even have an iPad back then. Waste of time. But nonetheless, this is one of the most hyped up releases, especially in like the modern metal sphere because of how well Sleep Token have been doing. You know, doing genre fusion and blending pop R&B elements with modern metal. <laughs> Funky goodness. Now, I'm not going to go into depth in terms of how they necessarily built the hype and how they got popular. I did that in my Truth About Sleep Token video. Feel free to watch that after if you guys want. But they've been rolling out singles. It's been a crazy madness just watching them go from like 300,000 monthlies to 2 million. And everyone in the scene just straight up talking about how much they love Sleep Token. So much to the point where you have people that before absolutely loved them and supported them any way they could and post on Reddit finally turn into the time old haters of well they're too popular now so i f f this bam they're poser ass b i don't even like insect booty but does the album actually live up to the unrealistic hype that's what we're going to discover today also did you know that 52 percent of you aren't subscribed hit the subscribe button down below hit the notification bell come hang out we do fun metal things here now of course the singles were aced you know chokehold the summoning a good blend of heaviness as well as the good pop r&b fusion elements and of course the ending of the summoning you know definitely showed a lot of people metalheads are down bad followed by you know granite aqua regis coming up much more of the pop sensibility but still just huge catchy hooks and then four dropping through the singles as well which one of my favorites it had this really unique black gaze element it still had a really heavy groove crazy heavy ending but still a big ginormous a uh, Biggest sing a chorus. And the last single of the roll-up being Do You Wish That You Love Me. Probably one of my lesser favorites of the singles at the time. But after listening to it a few times, honestly, it's a just good pop banger with a huge hook. Now we get to the actual album, the new new tracks, which is the most exciting part. Which, again, as a metal listener, I expect to instantly be disappointed. However, starting out with Ascensionism. I was very pleasantly surprised. I was instantly depressed, well, because it's Sleep Token and it's basically sad boy down bad music, but also because I saw seven minutes as the time on the song, which look, it's chill. Hey, I grew up listening to Dream Theater and stuff too. All right, but yo, it's 2023. Seven minutes is basically an EP. However, the seven minutes doesn't actually feel like an I want to go to sleep because long and bored moment. It actually builds quite pleasantly from like the nice big piano melodies and of course the production that really makes Vessel the focus as he is throughout the majority of this record into the nice epic huge energetic punch that the instrumentals kind of provide at the end this track's followed by are you really okay which honestly is probably one of my lesser favorite songs on the album like it's it's fine, it's good. It actually reminds me a lot more of like a classic rock ballad from like Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, Eric Clapton, which, hey, I grew up with that stuff. It chill, bro. I think Sleep Token does actually ace that sound very well for this track. It's just for me, it's probably one of the lesser innovative, exciting songs on the whole record compared to all the pop stuff as well on the record. Then we get into this fucking banger, The Apparition. Which... I don't care. This is one of Sleep Token's best songs. Hands down. It starts so beautifully with all the melodies and the and the building with the production into this more like hip hoppy, a little bit of trap hi-hats and production thrown in with Vessel actually rapping, as well as providing this insanely catchy, dark, haunting hook that just gets you right out of the sea like you're a little fish with no hope. That actually was much darker than I wished it would be. But this song's dark as so deal with it and builds to just this grandiose epic explosion again of energy which utilizes the earlier hooks and melodies into a more actual metal modern heavier music context moving on to do you wish that you'd love me again it was one of the singles i actually really enjoyed it after a few listens no other comments good pop song and then we get to the next track rain which if you know uh the meaning is an innuendos behind this track uh yeah, that liquid ain't coming from the sky. But this track, again, surprisingly hitting as one of the best songs I've heard from Sleep Token. Even though it's much more of like a poppy track, especially the hook. That f***ing hook, man. Ugh. Yeah, a lot of this album is like Fifty Shades of Grey, but with masks and breakdowns. Then we get to the next track, which my community could nonstop saying, Hey Nick, you know Take Me Back to Eden, the title track? Yeah, you'll like that one. Yeah, yo Nick. 
Listen, listen to that one. Trust me. Almost as if I'm like Oscar when like Kevin's talking to him in that scene in the office. Like I know what that means. Like, okay, we're going to get some dummy thickness at the end. And you start the song. You're like, damn, eight and a half minutes. I kind of want to delete myself. But... We get through it, we start it, and instantly the time just goes by. And this song is definitely the definition of build epico grand, where we have these very slow piano melodies, like a lot of these, that builds with a lot of production. Vessel's voice, which again is the focus on most of this album, and really gradually, but properly and consistently builds to this epic moment halfway through where again the guitars and the band kick in you can see it popping off live no doubt that continues on keeps building until the end where they just go sicko mode it's dumb it's stupid it's ignorant it kind of makes some deathcore bands look like bitch. I, I don't know what else to say it's just fun heavy Duh. and honestly I'm, I'm satisfied from there no pun intended but there is one more track Euclid, Euclid, you cl you I still don't know how to say it. Song twelve. That honestly, I see why it's here. It really is almost like the happy ending. <laughs> Not. It has this very like resolving, uh, finishing sound that is very major and kind of just takes on all of the bad emotions and turns it into this almost euphoric feeling wow this is a very sexual album that also then has references to sundowning and really just kind of ties it all together in this really beautiful uh, package so when you take this all into context with the amount of hype that was built with the singles the actual album tracks i think deliver not necessarily above the hype or under the hype i think they deliver right on the spot there's nothing that like the album tracks had that necessarily the singles didn't prepare you for it was just more good banger sleep token song which i i think is is fine because most bands just give you good singles and give you fucking trash on the album now the real question i guess being you know what impact will this have on the scene on on music in general and if i had to simplify it i really think because of how well Sleep Token did genre blending and genre fusion on this album, they basically wrote a new playbook, and not that there hasn't been other playbooks written by like bands like Bring Me or Loathe or like Spirit Box when it comes to modern music, modern metal genre blending. I think Sleep Token just did it in such a good, cohesive way and clear way where you have all of these songs that start out chill as poppy R&B ballads and go to the heaviest of hell moments and it sounds good it sounds like a full song that's cohesive and the production really ties it together I think this is going to allow really really heavy even deathcore bands I mean you even see deathcore vocalists like Will covering Sleep Token and people losing their shit a lot of deathcore fans actually are more stoked for Sleep Token I think than a lot of new deathcore releases or even stuff in the modern metalcore sphere. But I think you're going to see a lot of deathcore bands involve more genre fusion and bending and non-deathcore elements in their music as long as it, you know, hits and really still blends with deathcore. And you're going to see actually a lot of non-heavy bands and <laughs> butt rock bands start to, I think, incorporate heavier elements. And like they have pop songs, but they're still tuning to like eight string, nine string tuning. So I wouldn't be surprised if like Imagine Dragons on their next record throws down like nine string hilariousness. I think this album is going to help music become music instead of be so subdivided by genres. And it's just going to literally be, hey, is it f***ing good or not? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people twerking in the sleep token pit to these tracks and um, it's cool.